Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into today's video. We're uh, doing the month ahead. Look ahead today with the JMA and Seth SV2 models. We're going to go to the end of March with this uh, update. In fact, the uh, last uh, day of the um, JMA uh, part of the update goes to the 25th of March, which is, I've just looked, Good Friday. So uh, we'll have a look at uh, that in a second. Uh, so we'll be extending through the first month of the spring with JMA Friday this week. But before I get on with that, just very quickly to uh, make sure the ad, so there's links for articles on all the pages of Gaz, whether it's have a browse through widgets, and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in. Thanks very much for doing that. Uh, we'll start off with 500 mil of our height anomalies, broken down into weekly periods. As you know, with these, um, we've got the blue colour, so extrapolating to low pressure, below average heights, uh, red, yellow, orange, extrapolating to high pressure, that's above average heights. Uh, the first weekly period will be taken us through the coming week, the 26th of uh, February today, through to the 4th of March. We've got a trough of low pressure being centred over and to the south of the country with a ridge through the middle part of the Atlantic and going up towards Greenland as well. It means the uh, flow is going a bit like that. And uh, it places us on the cold side of the jet stream and there's a trough of low pressure there uh, sinking to the south of the country. So it could be quite cold and unsettled this and the charts, the shorter range charts, the GFS and the ECM this morning are looking quite cold, especially for the second part of next week and into uh, the first weekend of March. So this could be indicative of that sort of pattern, quite a cold uh, unsettled pattern there uh, being signalled for the coming week. If we have a look at week two, this one taking us from the 4th through to the 11th of March, very little change really. The trough of low pressure is more or less centred right over top of the country. We've got this ridge here extending through the Atlantic and going up towards Greenland. There is uh, some northern blocking as well with these yellow uh, red colours over the uh, pole, yellow and orange colours. So we're entrenching cold air into that trough via all of this ridging. So again, it remains quite cool, I think, this uh, up to the 11th of March and unsettled. Um, and there is wintry potential here because uh, it's quite a deep trough, so it would be providing uh, a fair amount of uh, fair amount of precipitation. And of course, with colder air coming down from the north, we could be seeing risk of wintry conditions at times with that. And then we go through to week three and week four. This taking us from the 11th through to the 25th of March. And uh, no real change, to be honest. The above average heights are still there around Greenland and extending a little bit up towards the pole as well. We've got this trough of low pressure still around the UK and Western Europe generally. And we'd still be bringing in fairly cool air, maybe even cold air, into that trough. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if this does come off uh, like this, I think there is a chance that we could have our first cooler or colder than average month of March um, of, uh, of the year. And we haven't actually had a below average month in terms of the temperature since September last year. So this could be our first cooler than average month, maybe six months, um, if it comes off as the Japanese model is uh, predicting. So that's the Northern Hemisphere view looking down at the UK from the pole. Let's have a look at the um, tropical and mid-latitude uh, view. So uh, what we're looking at here um, is that we've got the uh, tropical part of the planet just there and uh, then we've got the mid-latitudes uh, up here. This is the Northern Hemisphere uh, and this is the Southern uh, Hemisphere uh, down here. So that's south, uh, that's the tropics, and this is the northern part of the hemisphere. And where we are on uh, this chart is up here in the very far top right-hand corner of the chart as you're uh, looking at it. So for the um, for the coming uh, week, again, these are broken down into weekly periods. So the coming weekly period, uh, this is 500 mm of our height anomaly, places us under this trough of low pressure. You can't see the blocking that's above it. You can see the ridging through the Atlantic. We can't see the pole. Uh, on this chart, but we know that this blocking does extend back up towards Greenland and up to the North Pole as well. The temperature forecast then for the coming week is below average, a uh, cooler than average week coming up here from the 26th of February through to the 4th of March. And the rainfall anomaly, because we're in a trough of low pressure, uh, it's coming out wetter than average, above av average precipitation here for the west of Europe. In fact, for many central parts of Europe, we're coming out with uh, above average precipitation. If we have a look at week two, and again, very similar uh, weather pattern, really, 
in week two from the 4th through to the 11th of March. We find the trough of low pressure gain around the UK and generally centre to the south. The ridging through the middle part of the Atlantic and it does extend up here. We can't see the polar regions but it does extend up uh, like that. Um, so again it places us under the cold side of the jet stream with a trough of low pressure. So again we're signalling quite a cool week coming up for week two. Um, the 4th through to the 11th of March, below average temperatures generally being signalled, interestingly, particularly centred across the south of the country, a little bit less so uh, for the north. And the rainfall anomaly, precipitation anomaly, that is coming out generally a bit above average as well. So quite a cold and uh, wet start, or unsettled start, to uh, March seems probable here with the JMA. Then finally, week three and week four. This goes from the 11th through to 25th. 25th of March is a uh, good Friday, as I explained. Um, and very little change uh, with this one, really. The trough is still in there across the west of Europe. The ridge is still going through this middle part of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, the temperatures do recover a little bit. So uh, this could just be that, because we're going into week uh, three and week four, the signal... Uh, the temperature signal is becoming less, but it is reverting um, it is reverting back towards average there, as opposed to the cooler than average temperatures that we've got uh, being indicated for the coming couple of weeks. Precipitation anomaly is still coming out above out, so quite a wet March. Interesting uh, this, because March is usually one of the drier months of the year. February, March, um, they're probably the two driest months of the whole of the year, really, um, and that's perhaps a little bit surprising. You would think that would be the summer months that are the driest months, but no, it tends to be late winter, early spring that is the driest part of the year. The summer months, of course, are greatly impacted by convection and thunderstorms and all of that sort of thing, so that's why summer months in this country tend to be actually quite wet in August. Um, August does uh, trend as the wettest month of the year uh, on average, um, with March, February and March tending to be the two driest months. So quite a wet March being indicated here uh, from the JMA, and that is fairly unusual. So as for Japanese model, this is CFS V2. Uh, again, 500 millimetre heights broken down into weekly periods. The first week period taking us from the 26th through to the 3rd of March. And very similar, really got the trough of low pressure being sent a little bit more to the south of us uh, than the JMA is doing. But um, it's broadly the same idea. The ridge is through the middle part of the Atlantic and it's, it's extending up towards blocking over the pole um, and it is placing us on the cold side of the jet stream as well with the jet doing uh, something a little bit like that quite an unusual jet stream pattern there but uh, we're within cold air under that blocking uh, that's out to the north and the west of the country. Uh, week 2, this is the 4th through to the 10th of March. This one shows a ridge through the uh, middle part of the Atlantic. And it is pushing up towards Greenland as well with this trough across the west of Europe. So very similar, again, to uh, the JMA. It's all this ridging in the Atlantic is extending up to... Uh, northern block, we've got the red colours there over top of the pole. Uh, the position of the ridge and the trough means that we bring cool or cold air into this trough via the north, so you'd expect quite a cool and unsettled week there from the 4th to the 10th of March. Week uh, 3, going from the 11th to the 17th, a little bit of a change with this was trying to revert back to a more normal pattern, so the trough is more centred towards Iceland, uh, the ridge is down to the southwest of the country, and I think the flow probably going uh, something a bit like that. So it, it's not a heat wave by any means, but it's probably milder actually this week because we're bringing the air more from an Atlantic um, type source as opposed to uh, a northerly source. So I think this is a milder uh, week here through the middle part of March and probably fairly dry, especially down in the south. However, week uh, four, this is the 18th to the 24th of March, deteriorates again, turns colder and more unsettled. So the ridge pulls back into the middle part of the Atlantic, still got hints of blocking right over top of the pole, and this trough of low pressure again is coming back to the uh, east of us. So again, this means that we're probably opening the door to more northerly winds there. Um, and with the trough of low pressure, would be unsettled as well. So both the JMA and the CFSB2 are in agreement here, really, for how things are playing out in March. They're differing a little bit on the week-by-week -week detail, but the bigger picture is generally for quite a cool 
or maybe in at times cold and unsettled month uh, for March. So have a look at attention on this from CFSB2. Uh, the coming week, coming out a little bit below average, it isn't as cold as the uh, JMA is signalling for the coming week. Nevertheless, just uh, on the cooler side of average uh, there. We go through to week two, near normal temperatures really for week two. Um, maybe in hinting you get a little bit milder than average down in the south, but generally it's near normal for week two. Week three is the milder week, the one that looked more Atlantic based, and uh, we do see potential numbers going milder than average in week three. Week four is reverting back towards uh, cooler uh, anomalies again. Going back towards average, and I suspect on the pattern this will probably be colder than average. I think, um, I think generally the CFSB2 is undercooking the temperatures a little bit here. Um, I think the JMA is more in line with how things are likely to pay, uh, play out um, in terms of these cooler temperature anomalies. Week 3 is the week that looks um, generally mild than average. Other than that, I think it would be average to colder uh, than average, uh, to be honest. And then finally, precipitation anomalies for the uh, coming period. So... The next week is looking unsettled, a um, little bit drier than average in the south, a little bit wetter than average in the north and the west. Uh, week two is looking uh, near normal. Again, hint to get a little bit drier than average to the north and west, a little bit wetter than average to the south. Um, so that's all indicative of the ridging that's going on to the north and the west of the country, keeping Scotland and Ireland generally a bit drier and England and Wales probably a bit wetter. Signal gets very weak for uh, week three, uh, near normal, basically, or average. Um, and that will probably be a drier week, I think, with the ridge closer uh, to us. And then week four, that's coming out average as well. I think the model loses the signal, really, uh, particularly for precipitation, also a little bit for temperatures. I think it's losing the signal here as we're going further out. I do think the second half of March, probably week three, milder, drier, week four, wetter, and uh, colder, or I should say, colder and wetter. But quite an interesting uh, march being signalled here from both FSV2 and the Japanese model, the JMA. Um, if they're right, I think we could be looking at quite a cool month, uh, quite unsettled at times as well, um, particularly so from the JMA. And I think the JMA is more on the money with this, of how these patterns would evolve in terms of temperature and precipitation if we get the synoptic setting up as the JMA and the CFS are both indicating broadly they're going to set up then I think we are probably looking at quite a coolish and wettish uh, month could be some wintry potential in with that as well so the signals for March well it depends what you want really but not looking great if you want an uh, early start to the spring to get out in the gardens um, it's looking pretty cool and pretty unsettled uh, for March 2016 we'll do the March forecast uh, next week um, probably sometime around the second of the month it's the weekend forecast tomorrow. Come back for that. We'll also have a look at El Nino tomorrow evening. On Sunday, we'll do the spring uh, forecast, the final, third and final forecast for spring. That'll be on Sunday. Might be a little bit, a bit of a sneak peek as well at the summer. So there'll be a lot happening over the weekend at gasworthies.com. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.